Hi everyone, today's episode takes place in Boston. We're gonna meet up with Ellie Tiglau. She is a Philippine American who grew up in California and then moved to Boston to work in neuroscience. Ellie found that the Filipino community in Boston was actually pretty small, and so she started hosting these pop-up dinners. And since then, she's left neuroscience and does this full-time. I'm a home cook, a passionate home cook. I'm really curious in learning, what was your first pop-up like? Oh, God. It, yeah. <laughs> we had no clue what we were doing. I grew up in my dad's kitchen. He's a chef, but I by no means have any formal training. I was always his sous chef, and I could never like get past that, you know? Right. Um, and explore how I wanted to cook. When I had my first pop-up, I did it with my brother initially, and I had never seen so many Filipino people, wow. especially around yeah. my age. Kind of amazing. like. There are some students there, some young professionals. Um, there's also a big Filipino adoptee network in Boston, and they came out too. I mean, for me, I think what was really cool about that was just seeing who came out. We just thought, we're gonna do this thing, yes. and then that's it. And that was like the fuel to your fire. Basically, and, and that's kind of been what's been fueling this entire thing. Since 2014, Ellie has hosted over 100 pop-up dinners around Boston, with different themes from vegan Khmer dinners to host and narrative nights with local artists. She's using these pop-up dinners to eventually open her own restaurant called Tanam. Tanam became the outgrowth of our pop-up Bamangan, which just meant something to eat. I think that was like really appropriate for that because it was just like, we're just trying things out um, and this is something to eat. Tanam means cultivation or planting in my dialect and I think that just kind of is a throwback to my family's roots as farmers. And also, I see the space that we're building as the reason why I'm building roots here. Mm -hmm. And so there's just like a lot around that name that's really special to me. I think when I went to the Philippines, um, I really realized how limited our view is of Filipino food. Mm -hmm. I think that really spurred my desire to do more research, right. to learn about why we don't know all this food mm -hmm. that exists and to just show that there's a lot more to Filipino food than uh, lumpia and pancit. Exactly. Is it all right if I yell really quick? <laughs> cool. I, I don't know if you've taken a look at the zine. There's a poem about the lunchbox, and I think, especially if you're coming from another culture where your food might be different, you have that lunchbox story where you were made to feel like whatever you're bringing to school was not good. Um, Pampanga is a place where I think I see a lot of class difference, um, particularly because the Spanish were there. They gave resources to some people in exchange for like their support, and some people didn't get that. Um, Tidad, it's like a dish that you usually make out of necessity. It was important to highlight. I think these dinners don't often have the dishes that, that are coming from that background, and so um, that's even more reason to have it here. Tonight, Ellie is focusing on food from Pampanga, a region that's become known as the culinary capital of the Philippines. There were dishes on the menu that even I wasn't familiar with, like bringhe, which is native to the region. Bringhe is a savory, sticky rice. It has a lot of different vegetables in it. I think what sets it apart is that it's cooked in coconut milk mm -hmm. and turmeric, so it gives it a nice color. And it's also cooked on banana leaf, so mm -hmm. you get this like smell of the banana leaf. Don't want to interrupt your conversations. It sounds like you all are oversharing, maybe. <laughs> the way that this dish came together, I feel like was supposed to be a contrast to the dad. Ringhe is usually a dish that you have only at fiesta because it's so labor intensive. We use a uh, vegan fish sauce actually for it. <laughs> We've been working on vegan fish sauce for a long time now. There, you might have seen a little quote. Uh, Taming the Alien. There's a quote from Doreen Fernandez, who's a food historian that I always talk about, who talked about what it meant to make something foreign yours. For her, she said, Filipinos carry a around patis, which is fish sauce, um, so that things can taste a little bit closer to what, um, what we like, um, which is really fun. I like this dish because it's how we handle trade and colonization when those people came. We figured out how to work with what they were bringing and make it ours. This sort of thing exists in a lot of other cultures. Sometimes we want to make assumptions about where things came from, but it's also possible that we came up with these good ideas at the same time. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to share about that. All right, thanks. This is cool, you Phil. So I grew just outside of um, Greater Boston in Dedham, mm -hmm. so I was literally like, Suburbs and then Boston for me. But I've lived here all my life, born and raised. I like it here. 
I was really surprised that there isn't a larger Filipino population mm -hmm. here, or maybe like a more established mm -hmm. one. So I'm really curious what it was like for you growing up. There's not a really big Filipino community. We really tried to just seek out all the other Filipinos, just like invite them over to like whenever yeah. there was a party or an event. Yeah. And that was basically how I got a lot of my Filipino culture. What I think the biggest issue in, in Massachusetts at least is that a lot of people in Massachusetts don't really know what Filipino food is. So when they see it, it's just like, it's not as appealing as the other Asian cultures. When Ellie told me her story of how she wants to introduce Filipino food in Massachusetts and how she wants to present Filipino food, it's like, oh my God, like this needs to be what Massachusetts needs to introduce Filipino food into our into our city, into our state. I'm so glad you guys met. Yeah, I'm very excited. I'm really looking forward to her restaurant finally opening for Filipinos and Filipino food. <laughs> Ellie's pop-up dinners give you the story beyond what's on your plate. And that's perfect for a place like Boston, where education and history make up the foundation of the city. One thing I always tell people is this isn't your Lola's cooking. Yeah. Um, and I think that's really important because if that is your standard, no one else is ever going to come close. Those foods are so wrapped up in memory and obviously it's what you grew up with and feel connected to. Yeah. Filipino food is all about adaptation and so what that looks like to me is I really love the flavors, I really care about them, um, but I also love a really beautiful plate. This is part of it. And one day, I'll be the Lola. It's going to be the way that my grandchildren are going to be thinking that this is old school and traditional. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe here.